Imagine your mother or father packing your lunch with a piece of apple or pineapple between the slices of bread. You will be as shocked when you open the lunch box as you are now after reading this. Because we are so used to things like jams, jellies, fruit juices, cheese, french fries and so on. But did you ever stop and wonder how these things are made? Why do we boil milk before drinking? Or why do cooked food or vegetables rot if not kept in the refrigerator? Today's experiment deals with the same concept. You need at least three types of vegetables and a fresh fruit juice. Please label your samples clearly and note the preservative you have used for each one lest you get confused. After three to four days, you will get the results. We will talk about food preservation and the various methods involved in this. Now for some introduction. The term food preservation goes back to around 5000 years. Primitive people somehow accidentally found out that food exposed to heat stays longer than food that is not. Among the most primitive types of food preservation which are still in use are drying, smoking, salting and fermenting. The term food preservation refers to any number of techniques which prevent food from spoiling. But by going scientifically, the exact definition would be food preservation is the process of treating and handling food to stop or slow down food spoilage, loss of quality, edibility or nutritional value and thus allow for longer food storage. Preservation usually involves preventing the growth of bacteria fungi such as yeasts and other microorganisms. Although there are some methods which work by introducing benign bacteria or fungi to the food. As well as retarding the oxidation of fats which cause rancidity. Here are some variations. You have done the experiment with vinegar and potassium sorbate which is a variation of sorbic acid. Sorbic acid is a white salt which is very soluble in water. You have seen the same in your experiment. It is often used to inhibit molds and fungi in a variety of foods like yogurt, wine, cheese and many other baked foods. It is also used in the preparation of milkshakes and hot syrups. You must be aware that vinegar contains acetic acid. It is this acid that stops the microorganisms to grow in the food. It is used in pickling too. Now, can you think of something else that can preserve the food better than storing at normal temperature? Try using honey. Dilute it in water such that you get a 1% honey solution. Use it as a preservative and sprinkle it on the cabbage or take strawberries and see the difference after 2 to 3 days. You will see the strawberries sprayed with honey solution are much redder and fresher as compared to the control samples without any preservative. One more thing you can do is to try putting salt on a piece of apple. Rub the salt on the exposed surface and keep another piece as it is. After two days you will see there is less browning in the salted piece. This is because when a fruit is peeled or cut oxidation occurs. Oxidation reacts with iron containing phenols in the fruit. This causes the brownish appearance of the fruit. Salt denatures the enzyme and stops this browning of the fruit. We have used three teaspoons full of lemon juice in one piece to see the reaction of citric acid that is present in lemon on fruits. Now here is some scientific background. Food is a perishable commodity, so it needs to be stored properly to avoid contamination. Why do we need to preserve the food? 1. To increase the shelf life of the food items, although the freshness, palatability and nutritive value may be altered if the time of preservation is too long. Perishable foods can be preserved to prevent spoilage and made to be available throughout the year. In this way, Preservation helps to increase variety in our diet and make it balanced. 2. 
It helps during natural calamities when there is drought, flood and during scarcity of foods. 3. To stabilize the availability and the price of food throughout the year, especially the seasonal fruits that can be preserved for future use. 4. To reduce wastage so that we can cook something today and if it is not eaten within a few hours, we can preserve it and eat it tomorrow. There are several methods of food preservation. Some methods of food preservation are known to create carcinogens. In 2015, the International Agency for Research on Cancer of the World Health Organization classified processed meat, that is meat that has undergone salting, curing, fermenting and smoking as carcinogenic to humans. Maintaining or creating nutritional value, texture and flavor is an important aspect of food preservation, without which the preservation is useless. The methods of food preservation can be classified as the first, traditional, curing, cooling, freezing, boiling or heating, canning, sugaring, pickling, lye, jellying, jugging, burial, and finally fermentation. There are also modern techniques, pasteurization, artificial food additives, vacuum packing, irradiation, pulse electric field electroporation, modified atmosphere, non-thermal plasma, high pressure food preservation, biopreservation, and hurdle technology. We have listed most of the techniques above, but we are going to discuss the ones that are commonly used. The main reasons of food spoilage can be attributed to one or two major causes. The first being the attack by pathogens, which are disease-causing microorganisms such as bacteria and molds. Or the second, oxidation that causes the destruction of essential biochemical compounds and or the destruction of plant and animal cells. The various methods that have been devised for preserving foods are all designed to reduce or eliminate one or the other or both of these causative agents. We will talk about some traditional methods now. Curing. The earliest form of food preservation was curing or drying. It is used most commonly for fish, meat and vegetables. The main aim of curing is to draw water out of the food by the method of osmosis. It is also done by adding the combination of salt, nitrites, nitrates and sugar. The combination of salt, nitrates and nitrites is the most common agent of curing which inhibits the growth of Clostridium botulinum. By drawing the moisture out of the food, it becomes inhospitable for the microbes to grow. The most primitive method of curing is dehydration. It has been the main method of food preservation for thousands of years, though new technologies like refrigeration and synthetic supplements have started complementing it. Cooling Cooling refers to lowering the temperature of the food so that it can be preserved for a longer time. Lower temperature inhibits or reduces the growth of microorganisms. Cooling was done in the form of root cellars and ice boxes. Rural people still depend on ice cubes or ice boxes, but in urban areas, refrigeration has taken its place. Freezing this is one of the most common methods used in day-to-day -day life. This is used not only for raw foods, but also used dominantly for cooked foods. Freezing protects the food from the time it is prepared to the time it is thawed. Freezing slows down the bacterial growth by turning the residual moisture into ice. Freezing can be of two types, mechanical and cryogenic. Cryogenic is freezing in ultra-low liquid nitrogen at a temperature of minus 196 degrees centigrade. Frozen products 
do not need any preservatives as microorganisms cannot grow below negative 9.5 degrees centigrade. Frozen foods are becoming very popular in today's world. This is because the foods that are frozen are fresh and freezing does not at all deteriorate the quality of the food. However, this is not exactly true. Freezing does cause the water in the food cells to expand once they become ice and this can rupture the cells, thereby having possible impacts on taste and texture once the food is thawed. This is exacerbated by repeated freezing and thawing of the same food. Boiling or heating Boiling is an age-old technique which is still in use. You have for sure seen your parents boil milk after it is bought from the market or from the milkman. This is done to kill the bacteria present in it. Many a times, water is also boiled to make it drinkable. Water should be boiled for a minimum of 10 minutes at a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade or thereabouts, depending on the altitude. At high altitudes, where the boiling point is less than 85 degrees centigrade, the temperature may not be sufficient to eliminate all the pathogens, in which case it may need to be done in a pressurized system like a pressure cooker. Feeding bottles of infants are boiled to kill the microbes present in it. Food suitable for boiling include milk, starchy foods like rice, noodles and potatoes, eggs, meat, stocks and soups. As a cooking method, it is very simple and suitable for large-scale cookery. It has several advantages. It is simple, cost-effective, a majority of the color and nutritive value is retained. The boiling time should be kept to a minimum, by the way. The disadvantages include loss of water-soluble minerals and vitamins. It is very time-consuming and it also requires a lot of energy and fuel. Canning Canning is a process wherein the food to be preserved is processed and is sealed into airtight containers. Canning provides a shelf life of one to five years. It involves cooking food and sealing it in airtight jars and then boiling the containers to kill any remaining bacteria as a process of sterilization. Fruits that have a high acid content like strawberries do not require any preservative for canning but only a short boiling cycle whereas foods like carrots require a longer boiling cycle as well as addition of some acid as a preservative. The foods that are canned have a high risk of getting decomposed if not stored properly. Most of the decomposition is easily detected as the food gives a foul smell and the container may swell up. This is potentially hazardous for health as rotting food is typically toxic. Sugaring. This process is very similar to pickling. The fruits are heated with sugar which is made into a preservative. Sugar tends to draw water from the microbes by a process called plasmolysis. Sugar is used to preserve fruits either in the form of an antimicrobial syrup like for apples, pineapples, peaches and apricots. It can also be used in the crystallized form wherein the food material is first cooked in sugar to the point of crystallization and then stored dry. Candied angelica or ginger are examples of this method of preservation. Jams, jellies and preserves are also examples of where sugaring is used as the primary preservation method. Dates are an example of a fruit that is naturally so sweet that it self-preserves itself. In fact, in their native countries, dates are often de-seeded by the locals with their own mouth. These de-seeded dates are what customers prefer, but the dates are never washed or cleaned after the de-seeding. It's just that the dates are so sweet that any germs in the person's saliva that may have gotten onto the date are not able to survive. So the next time you have a de-seeded date, thank the sugar in it twice over for the benefit it gives you. Pickling. Pickling is a process wherein 
the shelf life of the food is increased either by anaerobic fermentation, by adding brine, or simply by dissolving it into vinegar. You have also done the same thing as a part of your experiment by adding vinegar. Pickling reduces the quality of the food preserved. This is mainly used for vegetables, meat and fruits. The food preserved is subjected to a pH of 4.6 or lower which kills most of the bacteria. Spices like mustard seeds, garlic and cloves are often added for pickling. Pickling is broadly classified into two categories, chemical pickling and fermentation pickling. In chemical pickling, the food is placed in an edible liquid that inhibits or kills bacteria and other microorganisms. Typical pickling agents include brine, that is high in salt, vinegar and so on. Many chemical pickling processes also involve heating or boiling so that the food being preserved becomes saturated with the pickling agent. Common chemically pickled foods include cucumbers, peppers and corned beef. In fermentation, the bacteria in the liquid produce acids as preservation agents, typically by a process that produces lactic acid. Examples are German sauerkraut and Korean kimchi. Lye. Sodium hydroxide is generally used as a preservative. This is also known as lye. Lye saponizes the food but changes the color and the texture. Jellying. Food may be preserved by cooking using a material that solidifies to form a gel. Materials which help in jellying are gelatin, agar and arrowroot. Some of the foods preserved by this method are shrimps and chicken liver. Jugging. Jugging is a process of brewing the food and then preserving it into an earthen pot or a casserole. The most common food item jugged is meat or sometimes fish. The animal to be jugged is usually cut into pieces, put into a tightly sealed jug or pot in brine and then stewed. Sometimes red wine or the animal's own blood is also used. This was a highly used method around the middle of the 20th century. Burial. Burial is a good choice for preservation. The factors like lack of oxygen, lack of light, cool temperatures, low pH levels all help in proper preservation. Burial may be combined with other methods such as salting or fermentation. Most foods can be preserved in soil that is very dry and salty such as sand or soil that is frozen. Sometimes meat is buried under conditions that cause preservation. If buried on hot coals or ashes, the heat can kill pathogens. The dry ash can desiccate and the earth can block oxygen and further contamination. In Odisha, for example, it is a traditional practice to store rice by burying it underground. This method helps to store it for three to six months during the dry season. Sometimes cabbage and kimchi are also preserved like this. Fermentation. Fermentation in food processing is the process of converting carbohydrates to alcohol or organic acids using microorganisms such as yeast or bacteria under anaerobic conditions. It is a naturally occurring process where the food gets spoiled but the result is edible. The best example is cheese. Production of alcohol is made use of when fruit juices are converted to wine and food grains to beer. It preserves food through the use of acetic acid, alcohol, lactic acid and anaerobic fermentation. The main fermented foods are alcohol such as beer, wine, vodka, whiskey and bread, yogurt, idli and dosa. Let's go through some modern techniques. Pasteurization the process of pasteurization is named after its inventor Louis Pasteur, a French chemist. It is a process wherein the microbes are killed in the food item. 
In 1864, Pasteur discovered that heating alcohols like beer and wine was enough to kill most of the bacteria that caused spoilage, preventing these beverages from turning sour. Today, this process is mainly used for dairy products. Here, the milk is first heated to 17 degrees centigrade for 15 to 30 seconds so that the microbes are killed and then it is cooled to 10 degrees centigrade to prevent the growth of other microorganisms. The milk is then stored in cans, bottles or packaging and stored under refrigeration. Pasteurization methods are usually standardized and are controlled by the national food agencies. Foods that are commonly pasteurized other than milk are beer, eggs, juices, canned foods, and so on. Vacuum packing. Vacuum packing is a process where the food is sealed in vacuum conditions by drawing out the air from around the food. This limits the growth of anaerobic bacteria or fungi, limiting the evaporation of volatile components. This helps to store the food for a long time. Vacuum packaging includes plastic bags, canisters and jars. It can be done either semi-manually or completely by machines. Food commonly vacuum packed are potato chips, cereals, nuts, meat, smoked fish and cheese. Fresh vegetables are also vacuum packed though with a smaller shelf life. Adding preservatives such as artificial food preservatives. A preservative is a substance which is added to food, beverages, pharmaceutical drugs, cosmetics, wood and many other products to prevent decomposition by microbial growth or by undesirable chemical changes. Preservation can be implemented either by chemical methods or by physical methods. Sometimes both the methods are combined. Preservatives are also added in the other methods like drying, canning, freezing, fermentation, curing, jams and jellies and a few others. The most used antimicrobial preservative is lactic acid. Its use prevents the degradation by bacteria. Another commonly used antimicrobial preservative is sorbic acid, the one you used for your experiment and you know how it worked. Benzoic acid, nitrate, nitrites and ascorbic acid, among others. These days almost all the ready-to-eat foods such as chips, cheese, juices, cold drinks, pickles, jams and jellies have preservatives. Irradiation Irradiation of food is usually exposing the food to ionizing radiation. The three types of irradiation used are beta particles, x-rays and gamma rays. The effects of this include killing the bacteria, molds and pests which in turn reduces the ripening and spoilage of the fruits. This is sometimes referred to as cold pasteurization as it is not heated. The usefulness of irradiation in food items is still in question since the overdose of this is hazardous to life, though there is no evidence that this is the case. Most astronauts in outer space eat food that is preserved through irradiation. Spices and other food items are sometimes irradiated. There are ever more ways of preserving food as technologies keep changing and advancing, but perhaps you have already got a good idea now about food preservation, so we will not discuss some of the other methods in use today, as they are not very popular in India. Though the methods like pulsed electric field electroporation PEF, is widely used in Europe, Australia and China. Potatoes are sometimes preserved through this method in India too. Here are some scientific terms. Saponize. In simple terms, it means converting fats into soaps. But scientifically, it means to hydrolyze a fat with alkali to form soap and glycerol. The second term, beta rays. Beta particles are high energy, high speed electrons or positrons emitted by certain fission fragments or by certain primordial radioactive nuclei such as potassium-40. The third, gamma rays. 
These are penetrating and the most energetic form of electromagnetic radiation of a kind arising from the radioactive decay of atomic nuclei. They are even stronger than X-rays. Here are some prerequisites. Basic idea and knowledge of foods, how and why they rot, why this is undesirable. Second, handling of food samples without cross-contaminating. The third, making simple solutions with salts and acids. And finally, cutting and preparing fruit and vegetable samples. Here are some applications. Food preservation has become very important in our day-to-day -day life. People tend to look for out-of-the-season fruits and vegetables, and food preservation is the only solution. Pickles, jams, yogurts, and frozen foods are very popular these days. Though there's nothing like natural and fresh foods, adding chemical preservatives has become a part of the routine. We tend to make pickles of mango, green chilies, amla, which is Indian gooseberry, and so on, to enjoy them later. It is a very common scene in many an Indian household to prepare these. Our breakfast is incomplete without cheese, bread, or jam, all of which are made by some or the other method of preservation. In closing, food has been processed and packed since the start of man's history on earth. Meat and fish were hunted, salted, dried, or burned before eating. Herbs were dried and stored for use as medicines. Beverages were made from fruits and vegetables. The main aim of food preservation is to maintain its availability throughout the year or during natural calamities. While fresh food is always the best, the increase in population has led to an increase in demand for food. To meet these demands, the industrial food processing sector has emerged. Food preservation has emerged as a life saviour to many.